welcome to White Horse RV Center in Williamstown, New Jersey, where today we're going to do a video walkthrough demonstration of a 2010 Winnebago Vista 26P. This is a double slide pre-owned model, stock number P12896. Again, P12896, 2010 Winnebago Vista. And Ian is one of our techs gonna walk us through this today. You gotta push both these tabs at the same time to open the hood. And then in here you have your normal things like your antifreeze, engine oil, transmission dipstick, your washer fluid. Um, and I believe that's all that comes with this. It's just your, your basic parts that are running the engine. Okay, and similar to any automobile for access to fluid down. levels. Make sure it latches. which you're going to want to go in beginning of season just to clean out, make sure nothing made a nest in there, spiders or anything. Okay, and there are two spin latches on the top there. You can use a key or a coin to help and just pull that panel down for access. And then here you have your, your cord, the power cord, which is a 30 amp cord. Um, with this model, it has a surge guard, so when you plug it in, there's a little light that'll flash here telling you time delay. If that's flashing, you're not going to get 110 in the coach. So if you plug it in, there's a problem. It's not that there's an issue. It's just this thing's waiting. It will connect when that light goes out. The other thing with this model is when you're running the generator, you actually have to get the cord and plug it back into itself for the generator to power the coach. So if you're self-contained on the generator, you have to plug your power cord into that outlet there to get power to your coach. And then in here you have your, this is to fill your fresh tank. Basically, you're going to hook your hose here, and if it's just connected and normal, the water's gonna go through all the plumbing. It'll work that way. Now, if you wanna fill your fresh tank, you have to put the tank fill, and then that will put water into your fresh tank. Now, before using the water pump or anything, you need to put it back to normal to work your water pump. Um, this here is for winterizing. You also have your cable or satellite connections in. Okay, and that would be an option aftermarket on a satellite dish. It's just pre-wired here, and then the cable would work plugged in at a campground if your campground has cable available. And then you also have an additional water pump switch out here. Um, back here is your output for your sewer and your valves. You have your gray tank valve here, which is your showers and sinks, and your black tank valve there, which is your toilets. If you're connect, when you're connected to the sewer, you can leave the gray open. That's fine, but you have to leave the black shut for two reasons. One, to keep the chemical in it that's going to help with odor and break down the material. And also, so uh, solids don't stay and liquids go out. So you want to leave that shut. If you have two-thirds, then you want to shut your gray a little bit before that. Pull your black, empty it, then shut your black, then open your gray to flush out the line. Okay, so it makes sense. You're taking the solid waste from the black tank and then flushing it out with that gray soapy water. All right, and your fuel fill for your engine, which is also the generator. And with these, the generator works. You hit quarter tank. On the quarter tank, it actually cuts your generator off so you can't strand yourself somewhere. Okay, so safety feature generator is going to cut off after a quarter tank of fuel. And then here is your generator. So access panel is easy to pop off there. Okay. This is your oil to check your oil level. Uh, there is a breaker right here for your generator itself. That puts the 110 output on or off. You can start it from out here. Which you probably want to prime it first by holding that. Yeah, it's cold here today. It's about 40 degrees, so. You see the red light on, you hear the fuel pump. It's also got to suck the fuel from the tank to the generator. shows you why you want to prime it because you've seen the first time it didn't start it mm -hmm. primed it and start it right up and the other thing too is you have to have this cover on when it's running or the fan inside will not flow the air the generator will overheat and be damaged 
Okay, so keep the cover of the generator on. That would only be for maintenance or accessibility of the switch. Put the cover back on. And if you're powering the coach self-contained on just the generator, make sure you have that power cord plugged into the outlet here. And then coming back here, you have your ladder, which you're gonna wanna go up there, I say beginning of season and end of season just to check your roof, make sure there's no damage, everything's good and clean. And the lap sealant, uh, it never hardens, so you can get little air bubbles through it or branch can scratch it. And if there is any issues, even slightly questionable, I would just get alcohol, wipe it down, and put lap sealant right over it. Uh, the supplementing lap sealant you can get at any RV dealer. Right. And then that's exhaust for your generator as well as hitch hook up at the back with wiring. which in here you have your board and you have your drain plug, which is right here. It's a nylon plug because uh, it's an aluminum tank. When you drain it, make sure you put a nylon plug back in it. Don't use brass or steel because if it strips, you need a new tag. If you do nylon strips, you need a new nylon plug. Big difference in price. And you want to drain that before you winterize because there's no need to fill that with any. Okay. And for specific details on all these major systems, you want to take a look at your owner's manuals. This is designed as a sample walkthrough as an overview of major systems. Owner's manuals will give more specific details on operations. And of course, you can always give a call with any questions you may have. And under your steps here are your batteries. You have your two house batteries and your one engine battery. You do have to check the water levels on usually do it once or twice a year also add some distilled water if they're low and then if you look right here you have some of your control you have your disconnects for your the coach side the house the living area and your chassis which is the engine um, you have your step to turn your step on and off and you have to turn your compartment lights on and off okay you have your fuse panel here which has your 12 volt and 110 fuses in it. And then coming up here, you just have light switches for porch or ceiling. You also have your GFI outlet here, which will control all the outlets in the coach. So if you have a problem with the 110 outlet, you wanna check that first before the fuse panel. So you would wanna reset that here if you have any electrical issue. Your main GFI is right at the entry door. controls for, for the, uh, a lot of the systems. You have to have your emergency brake on to operate the jacks or the slide outs. You start your engine, your jack pad will come on. So emergency brake has to be operational on to operate your jacks or slide outs. So it's a good safety feature. And it has lights here which will tell you if you forgot to put the parking brake on it'll tell you. If your voltage is low, if you have jacks down it's going to tell you. The weight light is while stinking, so if you get auto love or retract and it's blinking weight but not moving, it's stinking, you have to wait until it's done figuring out what it needs to do. Um, you just hit auto for auto level, and then when you're done, you just hit all retract to bring them up. Um, can you also operate it manually? You can operate it manually by holding the button that says man for manual. Mm -hmm. And you can go front to rear or side to side, okay? Um, over here, you just have your mirrors. Okay, bear with me because we're still social distancing. So I'm going to try to get you in there so you can see these switches here. The main thing you need to know is your mirrors, heated mirror. But this one's kind of important. This is the uh, auxiliary boost, they call it. Basically, it ties all those batteries I showed you together. If your engine battery's low, you can use the house batteries to jump it. Or if your house battery's low, you can use the engine battery to help power them to get things going. So if you did have low battery, if you left things on by accident, did not use the battery disconnect switches at the door, you could hit that battery boost auxiliary start switch, hold it in, turn the key over, and reserve enough power from your battery to start the engine. And then this has side view cameras and rear view cameras. The side views come on with a turn signal. Left, you get left camera. Right, you get right camera. And reverse will give you your backup camera. Okay. turn it on and you have your backup camera all the time. Okay. If you don't want that on and you turn it off, it's only going to come on when you give it a command. Okay. Now, 
And this is also your DVD player for your television, as well as your radio. Or, I'm sorry, on this one, you have an extra DVD player here. And your booster switch is over here, which you can see the little green light. There's a, it's hard to see, like a flashlight. Got it. You have the button here. The button in with the green light on is antenna. Uh, button out with green light off will let the, ca the cable come through. Okay, so green light off allows you to use park cable if available at your campground. And green light on would be an antenna booster for the basically TV antenna rabbit ear on the roof. Now okay. here's a major thing you need to be aware of. The seat can recline back as the slide out. And if you were to bring the slide out in with that, it will break the seat or the slide out. So you always want to make sure your seat is up past the, the uh, trim here. So that way when your slide out comes in, you do not contact your seat. Okay, so move your driver's seat forward so you clear that slide housing. Okay. And now the TV antenna you mentioned, there's the handle yes. and rotator. On this one, it is a crank up style. So you have to mm -hmm. crank it up to raise it. You can then adjust it. But when you're all done, make sure you remember to bring it down. Yep. Your stove here works just like your grill outside. You put it to light and you just flip in this. It's a little burner light. Okay, so it's direct spark ignition. Very easy there. Okay. And the tip is I would, if it's been sitting for a while, I would light your stove before you try any other propane appliances because they only try to light three times and they go to a safe mode. If you light this first, you'd be here clicking for up to five minutes time bleeding the air out of the line. Okay. Uh, microwave, just like your household microwave, your vent fan, and your stove light. Mm -hmm. Then your refrigerator here. Basically, if you put it to auto, it's going to try and use 110 first does not see 110 it will switch itself to gas if you happen to see this light check blinking means it did not light i'd always me personally i put it to gas before every trip i make sure i give it 10 minutes make sure it stays light that is not air bound because you don't want to put it on auto unplug pull away and it doesn't light and you don't realize that till you get where you're going and your food's warm and it cools down more quickly on the propane side, on the gas side. Um, electric's great for maintenance. And then I noticed there is a thermostat control on the front of the yes, fridge door as well. your temperature, how okay. cold you want. Great. All right. Um, over here, you have basically the controls for your slide out. In, out. The parking brake has to be on and the engine has to be running for this to work. And you also have a master kill switch here. This is off, no slide out to work on the slide outs work. You also have your generator switch in here. If you hold start, it's just like on the outside, that's the start. And mm -hmm. if you hold stop, that would be your prime like you had out there. You'll notice it's on when you see the numbers appear on your display. Okay. Um, you have your water heater here. This side, this part of it is the uh, propane side of the water heater. This is to test, check your levels. See uh, what you have where. Um, your water pump switch is here, and then your thermostat for your heating and air, cools air, heat is uh, propane. To run the AC, you need to be plugged into 20 amps or higher, or plugged into yourself and run your own generator. Um, you can use this while you're driving down the road. All systems can be used while in motion, so on a real hot day, if the dash AC isn't cutting it, you can start your generator, plug in, and run your roof AC. Okay, for comfort throughout the entire coach. Yep. Question on the uh, water pump side. Mm -hmm. Water pump is going to pull water from your fresh tank. So if you're yes. plugged into city water, there's no reason you're already no, pressurized. Yeah, you don't need to have your water pump on. And you don't need to turn the switch on and off because the water pump turns itself off when it has pressure. So you just turn that on, leave it on. So if you stop inside the road, need to use your sink or your bathroom, you have your own water. You don't have to go in anywhere. Coming back here to the bedroom slash bathroom. And behind that door is your... All right, I'm going to switch with you. Right. Going into the bath area. There's another water pump switch right to the side of the toilet here. And then there is an outlet here, but remember your main GFI is at the entry door on this particular coach. And there is also ceiling switch light here on the side. Okay, shower door. This is a toggle to spin to lock it for transit and then unlatch it to open. 
Okay, I'm gonna switch back into the bedroom area here. Um, here is the control for the bed slide. Um, if you want to add another TV, here's your connections here. Okay. Um, and then just your desk with simple light. There's storage under the bed and just storage inside all your cabinets. Okay. And this has a small type washer, clothes washer. So this was an aftermarket item that the previous owner included. Um, there may be owner's manuals or information along with it. But again, it was not a stock option with this particular model. So it is a freestanding washer that is available that comes with this coach. For specific questions on operations of these major systems, please do refer to any of the owner's manuals. You can always give a call as well with any questions you might have. And that's about it for this one. Okay, thanks so much for the walkthrough. Again, this is a 2010 Winnebago Vista pre-owned motorhome. Have a wonderful day.